Welcome to the Love Your Marriage Podcast, hosted by Joseph and Crystal Gruber. We are here to awaken authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. And that begins with our marriage, and now yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct, O Lord, our actions by thy holy inspiration, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may begin in thee, and by thee be happily ended. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I wanted to talk to you today. First off, welcome. Welcome to Love Your Marriage Podcast. I am Joseph Gruber, half of the podcast. Wanted to talk to you today about a fascinating quote from an inspiring speaker that I saw this past week, maybe a little bit longer ago, whenever this actually gets released. I was at a Catholic summit called the Scent Summit, and one of the panel discussions was about how to build a saintly culture in your business. So it was for business leaders, founders, executives. I am both uh, the founder of Our Outpost Marriage Ministry. I also helped to found a Chesterton Academy. So even though I felt outclassed throughout the whole week, uh, there was a sense in which I should have been there. Uh, and, and one of the quotes from one of the opening panels was from a fellow named Anton Colella of uh, Moore Stevens. He's the CEO. It's a incredibly large network of uh, accountant services, and he's uh, headquartered in in Scotland. So obviously everything that he said, I listened to more because he had a Scottish accent. But one of the things he said very early on, he was asked about uh, how do you how do you build a saintly culture, and he's like this is not a top-down thing. This is not a programmatic thing. This is not a, a here's a, here's the two-page readout on what the culture ought to be. He said very simply, I am the culture. He, as the CEO, Anton, he is the culture of, of more financial, more Stevens. And that really stood out to me as indicative of how we should understand culture in the home as well. If you are a married man, if you are a married woman, you are one half of the culture of the home. Between you and your spouse, you are the culture. What you value and what your spouse values, what you choose, what your spouse chooses, how you live your life, what you choose to produce, what you choose to consume, the kind of music you're looking at, uh, uh, listening to, the, the, the media you're consuming, the music you're creating, and the media you're producing. You are the culture. As far as any children that you two may have, as far as anyone who is coming into your home, whether for an evening, or for a day, or for a week, or for 18 years plus, the culture that they take in is formed by the union of the two of you. You are the culture. And that is both a reassuring thing when we talk about culture wars, when we talk about how bad the culture is getting. It is also a frightening thing because uh, we are sometimes not very attentive to how much of the outside culture we're letting into our home. But we actually get to choose quite a bit about what we allow in and what we don't. Uh, there are choices that we can make that we might not even think about making. We walked into uh, a friend's home and noticed pretty quickly there was no television in their living room. It was truly a room for living in, not a, a room for consuming. We walked into another friend's home, lovely people. There were screens everywhere, everywhere. Every room had uh, a television screen available, not on, but available. So we get to choose. You didn't have to have no screen. You didn't have to have every screen. You get to choose what kind of culture you're creating, what kind of space you're living in. And so there, there are many things that maybe we take for granted that it's worth reflecting on. If I am the culture and the decisions that I make are creating a culture in this home that hopefully, prayerfully, is going to leak out into the world, how attentive am I to that? And how, how much of a conversation am I having with my spouse about the kind of culture that we're taking in? Do we allow phones at the table? Do we allow phones in the living room? Do we say, we really should put our phones by the front door whenever we come home and then never follow through with it, like me? 
these are decisions that we make or decisions that we fail to make. And whatever it is, it is forming the culture of our home, whether there are children there or not, whether visitors are there or not, the culture that the, the buck stops with you. It's, it's you and your spouse creating a culture together. You can create a culture of life. You can find people. You can find other institutions that are for a culture of life. You can find allies in, in creating a beautiful life together or not. You, you can be allied with the people who are not creating beauty and not for the flourishing of life. So you are the culture. Whether you thought so or not, whether you wanted to offload that onto something nebulous out in Hollywood or out amongst some sort of cultural elite, you, my friend, are the elite. You are the creator of a culture. It is your culture. Maybe nobody else is ever going to see it or touch it or taste it, but it's yours and it, it's having an effect on the world. The culture that you're creating at home influences how you interact with the rest of the world. Whether you're going grocery shopping with a song in your heart and a little bit of a jig in your step, or whether you are stoop-shouldered and grumbling, it, it probably has to do with the kind of culture at home. And we have, again, agency. We have the, the ability to take a step back and to ask the question, what are we really creating here? What is it we're trying to create? And how merciful ought we to be to ourselves in the creating of this culture? Sometimes my wife and I, we can be very merciful to the point of too lenient with ourselves. And other times we can beat ourselves up over whether or not we're following through on our resolutions. And even that is indicative of the kind of culture that you, you're creating. Is it a culture of mercy? Is it a culture of leniency? Is it a culture of strictness? Uh, it's not for me to say what kind of culture you create in your marriage. It is for me to say, because you chose to listen to this podcast, that you have a whole lot of authority here. We, we talk about, you know, your home being your castle. Well, it's, it's your determination about how permeable those walls are. It's your determination about what you're allowing in and what you're, you're throwing out into the world. I would love, I would so very dearly love to see homes lit up by, by fires and fireplaces and songs and good cheer and visitors. But I don't see that happen very many places or with very many people. And I think that's because we're not making those choices that would lead to such a life. I would love to see families creating their own performances, their own plays. I would love to hear about fun, dramatic readings of, of a play that somebody wrote, or even of, of Shakespeare, or heck, The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde, because it's hilarious. I, I would love, instead of for people to be watching movies, for people to be reading plays and reading stories and writing stories and putting on puppet shows. These are possible things. Even if they're just something that you and your spouse do in, in your spare time when, when kids are away or kids in, are in bed or if kids are not part of the picture. Whatever it is you're choosing, I would love it for it to be so good that you would want it to spill out. I would love for it to be so good that you can't wait for it to spill out that your neighbors will tell tales of how incredible you and your spouse are in how you love each other and in how you love your neighbors and how you love the people who come into your home. Because when they come into your home, I want them to know that you and your spouse really and truly are trying to build a beautiful life. Because you have that power. Because you are the culture. You are. Little old you or mighty responsible you you are the culture. You and your spouse have this amazing ability to create something unique and new and loving. And I'm just so eager to hear from you about how that's been going. Particular ways to do that, you could always rate this podcast and leave a review. That is a handy way to let me know because we do pay attention to that. You can share it with a bunch of people who can then let us know not only did they hear our podcast, but that it was referred to by, by someone else. 
if you are Catholic and married and a man, I can put a link in the, the description of this episode. I would love to have a conversation with you. I'd love to hear how things are going. I know if you're watching this on YouTube or on the Spotify video, sometimes people say I have a judgy face. Sometimes my face does look judgy, I guess. I am not all that judgmental, I don't think. I, I just want to talk with Catholic husbands to get a sense of what some of their struggles are, what some of their successes are, what have been some of the best resources they've found in loving their wife and in loving their family and in building a beautiful home or in struggling to do all of those things. I'm putting together different workshops and retreats that I plan on putting on throughout the course of this coming year and possibly, you know, extended into time because we started a marriage ministry. So most of what we build now, we're hoping will be useful for, you know, years to come. But the more insight into other people's lives I can get, the better, the more grateful I would be. And I think, based on the fact that I have always found it helpful to bounce ideas off of a good listener, I think you would find it helpful to bounce ideas off of me. That is my suspicion. I can't guarantee it. I'm not a marriage counselor or a therapist. I, I have a master's in theology, and I have a whole heck of a lot of experience of meeting up with men to encourage them and their walk with Christ. We launched this marriage ministry because I want to help you not only in your walk with Christ, but also your walk with your spouse. So there's going to be a link for that there, and I don't think that there's much else to say. You are the culture. It's a beautiful thing. We would love to hear about it. You can also send us an email at hello at ouroutpost.org. We would love to hear from you there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This has been a production of Our Outpost, a ministry to awaken authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. Please like, share, subscribe, rate, and review if you found this helpful and encouraging. Find out more at OurOutpost.org.